Hey guys, sit back and relax and get ready for some repurposed and upcycled transformations. In this video, I'm going to take some items from my stash and some different techniques and show you how I make them into primitive decor. My first repurposed project is this Mancala game board. I believe that's what this is. I picked this up at the free area at my dump and I wanted to do something really cool with it. I didn't see a game board. I saw an egg holder for this and I wanted to make a couple of primitive ones. So it had some issues with it. There was a couple of dings and cracks in it. So I thought it would be best to just take it apart by removing the screws and the hinge from the end. Now that left some holes and a little indentation that we're gonna have to work on. I'm gonna start by filling in the holes with my Gorilla Glue and making sure that I have it all in the places that I wanna add my air dry clay. So I'm going to use a little hunk of this and push it into the spots where I need to get the clay into the holes and also to fill in that little spot where my hinge was. It uh, had a little bit of an indentation there. So I just filled it in with the, the clay and then I added, once I got it enough in there, I took a little bit of water on my finger and I smoothed it all out and then let it dry. Once that was dry, I took my sandpaper and sanded down the clay so that it was all nice and smooth. I also rounded the edges on this end. It was on the other, but the part where it had the hinge was not rounded really well. So I just rounded it a little bit to match the other side. I also took some sandpaper over the top of it. It had a bit of a shine to it, so I wanted to make sure I knocked that down because I am going to be painting this piece. I found four of these tiny little candle cups that I thought would make great feet for the bottom of my tray. So I added a little E6000 and a little dab of hot glue so that I could immediately start working on getting this done. And then once that was done, I could start painting when I was ready. I grabbed my Waverly black paint and I gave this guy two coats all over to get it to give it good coverage. Once this was dry, I went ahead with my sandpaper and sanded down the edges to give it a distressed look. I love to kind of take back some of that paint and give it a, a just a, an old used look. The next thing I like to do is with this black paint is take some antique wax. This is the Waverly antique wax. I get this from Walmart. And I like to put this over my black paint and it richens up the distressing that I've done when it goes back to the wood. And it also helps seal in and richen that black paint as well. So then it makes it a little bit easier to clean. So once I had it all covered with the antique wax, I wiped it back and I think this came out so cute. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to go over and subscribe and hit that bell if you haven't already. Another dump find from my free area. This is a cute little lamp I couldn't pass up. I added the silicone bulb. The base is very heavy. It feels like brass. I don't think it is, but it feels like it. And it's a cool color. It's black and it has a little bit of gold over the top of it to bring out the details. And I really like it. Didn't come with a shade, so I decided that I would make sure it worked first. 
and to add the black and tan material uh, over the candle part. I thought since I was covering it up, the little warning label, and it will tell you actually the wattage of the bulb uh, on that little sticker, I thought I would remove it and put it on the bottom so that if anybody needed to know the wattage of their bulb, if this one blew, that they could buy another one. So I took a piece of the black and tan material out of my scraps and wrapped that around the candle area of the light. I made sure that it was down below so that it wouldn't touch the, the bulb at all because it does get a little warm and that seemed to do the trick. I trimmed off the excess and just got it cleaned up a little bit and made sure my ends were stuck down really well. And I grabbed a couple different colors of pit berries. I have some burgundy ones and some light yellow or mustardy colored ones that I thought would look really good in the little cup area of this light. And that's going to, I'm just going to cut those down, get rid of some of that excess wire that I don't need and make them individual little pieces. Once I get that done, I'm gonna wrap it around a marker here and just give it a little, it fills it in a little bit more when you wrap them. I also don't want them really tall, obviously because of the bulb being in there. So I just wanted them stuck in there, just short little guys stuck in the little cup. So I just kind of added the mustard and the burgundy colored pips and then I have this rusty spring that we found a whole bunch of them on our property when we moved here and I saved some for myself. It fits perfectly on there so we're going to repurpose this and I decided that I would add that to this little light and give it a rustic primitive little look. I had to mess around with it a little bit to get it to fit just right. The uh, wire needed to come through and the berries needed to be adjusted so that they were weren't getting squished. I added a cute little rusty star and I think this is a very cute little rustic primitive piece for any little display. I scored this cute little napkin tote from a indoor yard sale that I went to recently and I just had to get it. It was so stinking cute. I love the shape of it. So I'm going to just take a little bit of sandpaper and sand it down a little bit. I am going to paint it and add some decoupage paper on it. So I want to make sure that that napkin's word is not going to show through anything. So I just went through and sanded everything. It was a little bit shiny and got that all sanded down. I grabbed the Fusion Woodwick is the name of the color. It's a beautiful brown gray color. And I'm gonna do two coats on this little tote. I dug around in my stash and I found some decoupage paper that I had some just pieces left over that were just too pretty to throw away. So I trimmed them down from some longer pieces that would fit on the front and back of the tote. 
I then decided that I was going to paint the backs. I wanted it a light color and I didn't want to have to paint the tote. So I thought painting the paper would work better. I know some people cringe at this, but it works really, really well. And I didn't want some of the colors to get lost between because the colors are so close from the tote and the colors in the paper. I didn't want them to get lost and I wanted to be able to see the beautiful paper. So then I realized that I had wanted to rip the edges and make them look a little more organic and kind of just old and, and uh, you know, like it had worn off around the edges. So I tried it, tried using my little water pen on the paper to see if it would still rip. And guess what? It did still rip even after the paint was dry on the back of it. So after I painted both sides uh, or both pieces on the back, I did that all around both of both of them so that they would fit. And then I used some Mod Podge to stick them down. I did just a thin coat from edge to edge, top to bottom, and made sure that there wasn't too much of the Mod Podge on the box. Then I added my paper. I sealed my paper in with Mod Podge and then once it was dry, I took my sandpaper and went over my edges to give it a distressed look. Of course, if you were doing the same technique, you wouldn't have to, and you didn't want to distress, you wouldn't have to do this part. You could skip it. But I really like my pieces to look older and distressed and it gives it a little bit of, I don't know, kind of a, a story to tell. I'm now going to take my black wax and go over the edges, any place where there's raw wood, and I'm going to add that black wax to it. I'm also going to go around the edges of the paper where I ripped it. You can kind of see the white of the paper, and I want that to get a dark aged look too. So I'm just going to take my little brush, dip it in my wax, and and just kind of go move it around and find places where I want to put it just to give it an aged old look. had somebody ask me about how I do my basket so I picked this one up at the free area at my dump and I thought I would show how I uh, do my baskets in a primitive way and what I use. So I'm outside and I've got a few things that I want to uh, spray black. So I'm going to do these first because I've cleaned these they're all ready to go. This needs to be cleaned and wiped down and I gotta fix this part here. So while that's drying over here, I can work on this and clean it up. It's just a like a bathroom tiered stand and I wanna paint that black to match my decor in my booth. 
So what I'm gonna do is take a can of spray paint, um, this one. I use Rust-Oleum Flat uh, Paint and Primer. And I'm going to spray the basket and this, this um, shelf. Okay, so like I said, I had somebody asking me about how I grubbied up my baskets, like distressed them and gave them a an older look. Like what are the steps? So I took the basket and spray painted it black. That's just my base coat that I'm gonna be able to distress. I'll distress back to the original basket, but um, I'll distress back also just to the black. So. We'll, we'll get a little variety in colors and all that kind of thing. So I'm gonna use my fusion paint and mustard. I love using this and I'm just about out. I think I've got enough to do a coat or two on this and then I'll have to, I gotta buy a new new one because I gotta have it. It's, it's just a must around here. So um, I'm going to paint this, the mustard color all over, let it dry and see what it looks like. I may go back and um, do a second coat. I'm not positive yet, but we're gonna we're gonna just get started. I don't think I'll do the inside the mustard. I may do around the lip, uh, but I'll probably do some kind of a lining inside this. I don't know what I have for material. I haven't been to Hobby Lobby to get my my. Um, my black and tan material that I love using so much. Okay, so I'm not liking the color that I'm getting here. So I'm gonna go in with a second coat. I wanted a little more mustard. Okay, so here is my basket. It's got a little bit of a second coat in certain spots, but it's not fully covered. As you can see, you can still see the black through it. And the inside has got splatters and stuff. So you either can paint the inside. I like to add fabric to the inside because I think it makes it, I don't know, look better. Look, I don't know. I, I, do, I'm, I do them without the inside sometimes as well. But I like to put the fabric in there because it just makes it look nicer, I guess. I don't know. But... It's just preference. So all I'm going to do is just take a piece of sandpaper and go across. This is pretty heavy grit. A hundred. So it's 100 grit. So as you can see, I've got some spots here that have the basket coming through. And then I have spots where the black is coming through. I like that variety that it gives. Now you can distress as much or as little as you want. You don't have to distress at all. You could put a good two coats on that and not even distress back whatsoever. But because I like the aged old look and I like the color of the mustard and the black together, 
it just tells me that it needs to be distressed so that you can see all of it. But see how awesome that looks with the variety of the basket and the black. Like I said, you're going to get pieces that are going to be the, the basket coming through. And then you're also going to get the black coming through, which is fine with me. I will paint the bottom, but for, you know, to get this going a little bit quicker so that you can see how I do it, I'm going to do the next step and show you how I do that. And I'll save the bottom for last. Okay, so now I have my antique wax. It's hard to see the label, but this is what it looks like. I buy this at Walmart and I have a brush. And then I just take and brush it on just like I just paint it on over the whole basket. Brush works really well because it gets down in those canes and gets the, the antique wax in there really good. So then I have a rag nearby and I just wipe it back. And I don't worry about getting way deep in there. That just adds to the depth of the basket and kind of gives it some more rustic look. But can you see, let's see, can you see the difference? So there's this side. And then here's where I just added the antique wax. It just darkens it. It grabs a hold of the basket uh, that comes through here and darkens that up just a little bit, richens it up. And then it just gives the basket an old antique look, I think, especially if you don't get right down in these crevices and clean them out. Like if you get right down in there, I like to leave a little bit in the canes and uh, it just gives it that deeper, richer look. But I love how it takes the colors and just deepens them. And also antique wax is a sealer. So once you put this on, this is sealed unless you want to spray seal it. Like if it's going to be outside and have a plant in it or inside with a plant in it, you may want to seal it in case you get water on it or anything like that. But if you're going to just use it for decor as far as putting your keys in it or a fake plant or something like that, um, this is going to be plenty to be able to just clean it and wipe it. it makes it easier to clean with the antique wax on it. it gives it a nice seal so I found this crazy piece of black and tan material that I have I usually like to use the smaller squares I usually like to use this one the smaller squares on my baskets I don't know why I just prefer this one I I just like it better but I do have have I did have this piece down in my um, scrap box of stuff down in my other work area so I can I think I can piece this together there's enough here to do this little basket so basically what I do if it's a one if it's a two-sided material you don't have to worry about which way you put it on if it's a one-sided material you want to make sure that your material that you want showing is on the back side of what you're doing, um, the way I do it anyways. So I lay my basket down, I take my material with the good side down because when you go to flip it in, you're gonna be flipping it so the right side is out, if that makes any sense, I hope it does. So because this is a two-sided material, I don't really have to think about that too much but I have my glue gun and I just go under the lip of my basket and I just put some glue down there. That's why I didn't do this whole, I just plugged this in not too long ago, so it's not gonna give me a lot. I don't need a lot of glue anyway, but I just start somewhere. I usually like to start on the where the handles are, if there's handles. And I just start taking the edge and putting it down underneath the edge of the basket. So just do a little more glue. Doesn't have to be perfect. When you go back 
in and flip it around, you can go back and re-glue pieces that didn't glue down right. Um, I try to get it fairly close to the edge of the material. I don't want it too off. But I just basically go all the way around like this. I'm gonna have to piece it because I don't think I have enough to go all the way around, maybe. So when you're done, you're gonna take it and flip it in like so, and you'll have a lining in there. Now you will have to cut it, you will have to trim it. Sometimes I do it beforehand, but because I wasn't sure if I would have enough, I um, didn't do that. But I probably should have, because this is such an awkward size piece of material. If you cut it down a little, it's not so difficult to handle. Okay, so I tucked it all in. I Well, I trimmed it down so that it would go down to the bottom with a little bit of overlap. And then this second piece that I had to put in to piece it in, I just tuck that in there and then made it long enough so it would overlap. So this piece here just kind of covers all of the bottom and gives it a nice look. Now I have been known to cut out a piece of cardboard the size of the bottom, covered it with this material and put it in there. And then that holds it in nice and, and stiff and it gives it a stiff bottom, but I think this looks fine. Now the only other thing that I do is I go back with my glue gun around the edges here where I couldn't get right in there and I just roll my material up underneath that edge. See how it kind of hangs down like this? I didn't get enough glue up underneath there. When you do it this way, it gives it a nice neat edge. gives that a nice edge on there. See how it's kind of falling down on this part? We can go back and get rid of all the glue afterwards. I think that looks really good. The basket came out really pretty. Now we'll style it and see what it looks like styled. I hope you enjoyed my projects today. Let me know down in the comments which one is your favorite if you have one. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave that comment. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.